In my opinion, the number one reason people don't improve their GAMSAT score is poor study habits. So today, I'm going to give you my top three tips for GAMSAT success, and these aren't just the things which worked for me, but also the things that I've seen work for all the students that I tutor for the exam as well. Hey guys, my name's James, I'm a second year medical student and GAMSAT tutor, and I made this channel to share all of my tips for GAMSAT preparation and getting into medical school. So if that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my future videos. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to give you my top three tips for GAMSAT success. But before we did that, I just wanted to step back a little bit and think about what we're trying to do in our GAMSAT study and where we're trying to get to. So my approach is to form what I call problem solving frameworks. Now, how I describe this is really just a generalized form of a common question type. So for example, you might look at a question on pH or bacterial growth or even decibels, and you could look at those as individual questions. But if you look a little bit deeper, you'll actually see that at the core of all three of those questions is the concept of logarithms. So I think it's far more valuable to look at those questions as all part of a logarithm framework. And once you form that framework, you have an idea of the skills you need, the common question types, how you're gonna recognize that framework, as well as any common traps that you might see. So just keep that in mind as we're going through this video, that that's where we're trying to get to. So think about how all of these tips could help you start forming those problem solving frameworks. Okay, so tip number one is reflecting. Now you don't need to go too far in your GAMSAT preparation to read something about someone saying that reflecting is the key to GAMSAT success. And whilst I agree with this, it's thrown around as a bit of a buzzword I find, and not many people really know what it means. Now in my mind, all reflecting means is just documenting as much as possible about the questions that we're doing. Now I've spoken before about how I think the best way to study for the exam is through practice questions, specifically the ACE of practice questions. So how reflecting would look like in that is every question you're doing, you want to be documenting as much as you can. So almost think of it like a process to get from start to finish for every single question. Now within that process, what did you do well? What didn't you do well? Were there any mistakes you made? Was there anything you missed? That's what I'm talking about by reflecting. But why? Well, if you think about it, this is exactly what's required to form one of those frameworks. You need to know how to recognize the question. You need to know what processes there might be. You need to know what kinds of questions there are. You need to know the traps. So by documenting all of that stuff, over time, we start to get a library of all these different question types. And once we have enough, we can actually compare different questions. And that's when we start to see the patterns and the similar patterns between questions are the ones that we start to think, maybe these are part of a broader problem solving framework. Now, the best thing is that reflecting is really easy to do. In my preparation, all I did was just document it on an Excel spreadsheet. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine certainly didn't start perfect. But over time, you start thinking more and more about the information that you need to capture, and it just gets better and better. So moving on to tip number two, which is repetition. So through this reflective practice, you should be starting to accumulate a long list of things which you haven't done very well. So these could be a chemistry concept, some index laws in maths or other skills, and you should just be continuously growing a longer and longer list of things which you haven't done so well. Now the key is that you want to start filling those gaps. So go to whatever resource you think is going to be best to learn how to do that, that skill or learn that piece of knowledge better. And then the key after that is to repeat and repeat and repeat until it's second nature. I find so many people do this first part of the process where they document things they don't know, they go and learn how to do it properly, but they don't repeat it. And then when they come across a similar question, they just make the same mistake again. You simply have to just keep practicing these core skills. This comes into the concept of spaced repetition, which you might've heard about, which is essentially the idea that every time we recall information, it takes longer and longer to forget that information. And this is really a core principle of learning. So we need to apply this concept of spaced repetition to those skills and knowledge that we know form part of a broader problem solving framework. 
If it's a really isolated thing, I care less about that. But if I've seen it in, you know, if it's a logarithm, I know that there's going to be logarithms on the exam. I simply have to have that skill completely down pat or else I'm just going to keep making the same mistake again and again. And I know that that question is going to pop up again and again. So note down this list of skills, note down the list of knowledge, whatever you think it is that you need to understand, just have a list of it and quiz yourself on it regularly. So there's heaps of software out there these days like Anki and Quizlet where you can just make your own flashcards and that's a great idea. But in my study, I was even a little bit more basic than that and I just made paper flashcards. And on those things, I might have something like Prove that these two molecules are chiral or achiral. So I'd recognize to myself that comparing molecules and rotating them uh, in stereochemistry was a very important skill. So I just made that a flashcard and just repeatedly tested that so that if it did come up on the exam, I'd just instantly be able to do it. And importantly, do it without making a mistake. We know that the GAMSAT requires a deep understanding of really simple concepts. If you're ever going to get unstuck for not knowing something completely, it's going to be in the GAMSAT. They have a very unique way of identifying people who don't have a complete understanding of a topic. So if you know it's a core thing, it really has to be second nature. And the best way to do that is just repeatedly practice it and you'll get a better understanding of it. And then when it actually comes up in the exam, you'll be able to apply it very, very well. If you're finding this video useful, I just wanted to plug my GAMSAT preparation community, which is a platform which I use to share resources such as question tracking templates and flashcards like we've spoken about in this video, but also hold weekly events and host recorded video courses. You can access absolutely everything in the community for only $1 a month, and that's really just to cover the running costs of the site. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave the link in the description. Okay, my last tip is consistency. In my opinion, you just simply have to be doing something every single day. It doesn't have to be a lot, but just do something. Now, I know you're probably busy. When I was studying for the exam, I was also working full time, and I recognized I couldn't be studying five hours a day. The good thing is you don't need to, but what you do need to be doing is something. In the example I gave before, Proving that a molecule is chiral or achiral probably takes 30 seconds. Same with a lot of the math skills. So these are things that you can do every single day. Now I've mentioned skills, but these could also be questions which you think are really good examples of your problem solving framework. So again, we want to be able to recognize questions quickly, have an idea of the questions and be able to solve them. So why not just repeat that? Why not try and actually see if your framework is good enough or not? The key is if you are busy and you're struggling to find the time, set yourself a detailed schedule of things which you know you'll be able to do that day. If you have a busy day, don't schedule all the busy tasks. Do th something like practice your logarithms, practice your index laws. You know that those things will be useful and you know that you need to do them. So do them on that day when you don't have much time. When you do have more time, this is when you can actually start doing questions and documenting those findings because doing that well takes up a lot of time. If you want to hear more about how I implemented these tips in my study, I'll leave a video here that you can watch. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.